Hello, today I will talk about gate drivers and how you can implement a simple and cost-effective gate driver for an Xperia Gunfets. Welcome to this quick learning video. My name is Ilian Bonov and I'm a product marketing engineer for GAN at Xperia. Now, let me introduce you to our CAS code architecture that we use uh, for our Gunfets. Uh, we have uh, two dice which are connected in series in the package where you have our 650 volt depletion mode GAN and our silicon MOSFET, uh, which is uh, a 30 volt rated silicon MOSFET. This 30 volt silicon MOSFET is used as a driver for the 650 volt depletion mode GAN. And because of that, uh, you're only driving the 30 volt silicon MOSFET. So essentially, you get the benefit of uh, uh, driving this silicon MOSFET by having a high threshold voltage of 4 volts. You, and because of that, you can drive uh, the, the device from 0 to 10 or 0 to 12 volts. And you have the robustness of the silicon uh, gate oxide, uh, which is rated at plus minus 20 volts. Now let's look at the gate driver circuit. And in here you have two gate drivers. We use one for the high side, one for the low side. And you can use any generic uh, gate driver for silicon. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is the common mode transient immunity. You have to have common mode transient immunity above 100 volts per nanosecond. And the reason you have to keep that parameter in mind when choosing the gate driver is because of the fast transients that the GAN devices will have. The gate driver has to be able to cope with these fast transients and switch reliably on and off the device. Other than that, the circuit is quite simple. You have a gate resistor in series with the gate uh, of the GAN FET and the ferrite bead. The only reason we recommend the ferrite bead as well here is in case this uh, gate source loop is not optimized and it has uh, higher inductance, this ferrite bead will act as a filter and essentially um, provide a reliable signal to uh, the GAN device and you don't have to worry about switching reliably the device. If you've optimized that gate source loop and if you've achieved really low inductance, you wouldn't need that uh, ferrite bead and you can just fit the resistor there. In terms of uh, uh, the high side voltage, you can see that we can use a simple bootstrap circuit. And this is because of the high threshold voltage of the device, of the silicon MOSFET, which actually turns on the device quite fast. So from four to six volts uh, or seven, the device is already turned on. So essentially, if you have any variation on the bootstrap circuit, for example, we have 10 or 12 volts here, and then you have the voltage drop across uh, this diode, it doesn't matter for the device if uh, the voltage here is at eight volts, nine volts or 10 volts, the device will still be able to switch and turn on reliably and to be fully turned on with uh, the highest current possible even uh, with different voltages. So when you look at other uh, others on the market you can see that in their case you have to have very tight regulation uh, where you have to have let's say six or seven volts on here to switch it on reliably and you cannot have any variation. In our case, you have more flexibility and you can use a very cost-effective circuit like this one here. So it's really that simple. You can use uh, a generic gate driver, a few resistors, ferrite bead, and a bootstrap circuit, and you can drive an Xperia GANFETS. Thank you for watching this uh, quick learning video, and if you want to learn more, please visit Xperia.com.